This video will be a note for note breakdown of the main guitar solo that enters at roughly 2 minutes and 31 seconds into the song. Two overlapping lead parts will be analyzed. The supporting rhythm guitar and bass parts will also be detailed later in this video. A tab sheet of each guitar part will be displayed briefly for each of the three guitar parts in this analysis. The tuning used in this video and on the record is standard E and 440 wavelength calibration. The actual guitar solo is going to be 16 measures in length, but guitar one will only be active for the first 12 measures. We're going to start out by placing the first finger on the B string at the 8th fret and the third finger on the G string at the 10th fret. What we're going to do with this double stop is pick it downwards on the last and beat of every measure and we're going to do a unison bend. What that is, is we're going to take that third finger and bend the G string up a full step in pitch so it sounds like the same note as the first finger on the B string, just like this. We're pretty much going to repeat this process throughout most of the solo. Okay, after we do that unison bend, it's going to be tied to a dotted half note on the next measure, which is worth three beats, and that will be tied to an eighth note. In short, this eighth note is actually going to ring out as a whole note over two measures. So for the second measure, we're going to shift down on the same two strings with those fingers a half a step in pitch and repeat that process. For the third measure, we're going to shift up a step and a half so the first finger is on the B string at the tenth fret and the third finger is on the G string at the twelfth fret. We're going to repeat that process. And for the fourth measure, we're going to shift all the way down on the same two strings again with them same two fingers. So the first finger is on the B string at the fifth fret and the third finger is on the G string at the seventh fret. With a four count lead in, here's what this is going to sound like. And notice that I'm playing on the and beat after four. One, two, three, four, and 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 one, two, three, four. And now we've reached the fifth measure. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to this position where we started out the first measure. The first finger is on the B string at the 8th fret. The third finger is on the G string at the 10th fret. We're going to continue this process with another unison band. For the sixth measure, we're going to shift both fingers up a full step in pitch and repeat that process. For the seventh measure, we're going to shift both fingers up another full step and repeat the process again. Okay, after we do this unison bend, we're only going to let it ring out for a half a note in the next measure. We're going to finish up the eighth measure by shifting to this position on three with the first finger is on the G string at the 14th fret. We're going to pick this down and we're going to hammer on quickly to the 16th fret with that middle finger. Okay, these first two notes are going to be 16th notes. And we're going to pull off back to the first finger on that same string at the 14th fret. This is counted 3 and just like this. 3 and. On 4, we're going to put the third finger on the D string at the 17th fret and pick that down for an 8th note. And on the and beat, we're going to place that middle finger on the B string at the 16th fret and pick it up. Okay, and after we pick it up on the and beat, we're going to bend it up a full step on one and hold that all the way up through four. With the four count lead in, here's what measures five through eight are going to sound like. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Let's run through the first eight measures of the Guitar One solo in sequence. I won't count this aloud as I play, I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now we have reached ninth measure. What we're going to do is place the first finger on the high E string at the 12th fret, and the third finger will go on the B string at the 15th fret. We're going to continue playing these double stops as unison bends just like we have been doing all along. For the 10th measure, we're going to shift both fingers up a step and a half in pitch and repeat that process. Now for the 11th measure, we're going to use the same feel and a time value, but we're going to shift to a single note. We're going to place the third finger on the high E string at the 20th fret. Okay, and then for the final measure, we're going to shift up a step in pitch, so the third finger is on the 22nd fret at the high E string. We're going to bend that. So with the four count lead in, here's what measures 9 through 12 are going to sound like. One. Two, three, four, in one, 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 two, three, four. Let's run through all 12 measures of the Guitar One solo in sequence. I won't count aloud as I play, I'll just give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Since I couldn't get the whole page to focus in so you could read it, I'm just giving you half of it now, and I'll give you the other six measures on the next slide. And here's the rest of the Guitar One solo. The Guitar Two solo is going to enter at exactly 2 minutes and 45 seconds. This is halfway through the solo on the ninth measure. The Guitar One and Guitar Two solos are going to overlap each other by four measures. We're going to start out by placing the third finger on the B string at the 15th fret. We're going to pick this down on one and bend the note up and let it ring out for two beats or a half note. On three, we're going to take the pinky and place it on the G string at the 16th fret, pick that down, let it ring out as a quarter note. On four, we're going to go with the first finger to the 12th fret on that same string, pick it down again, this time it rings out as an eighth note. To finish up the first measure of the Guitar Two solo, we're going to place the third finger on the D string at the 14th fret, pick that up. Okay, this is an eighth note, but it's going to be tied to the first half note of the next measure, so it's going to ring out in the next measure. So with the four count lead in, here's what we have so far for the first measure and a half. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two. Now from this point, what we're going to do is place the first finger on the D string at the 12th fret. We're going to pick this down on three. It's going to ring out as a 16th note. We'll hammer on to the 14th fret of that same string using the same, or third finger and quickly pull off back to the first finger. Okay, those are two more 16th notes. Okay, that's the E and B. Now, on the A beat, the last 16th note of that quarter, we're going to slide down to the ninth fret. And what we'll do once we get to this point is let that ring out through four. Okay, it's tied to the quarter note on four. And we'll take the middle finger and place it on the A string at the tenth fret and pick that up on the final and beat. Okay, and that's going to ring out into the first quarter of the third measure. So with the four count lead in, here's what the first two measures are going to sound like. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and a four, and one.
And now we have reached the third measure. The middle finger should still be on the A string at the 10th fret, and this note should still be ringing out from the end of the second measure. It's tied to the first quarter of this measure. So on two, what we're going to do is place the pinky on that same string. At the 12th fret, we'll pick this down, let it ring out as an eighth note. On the end beat after two, we're going to go back to the middle finger on that same string, 10th fret, pick it up. On three, we're going to go back to the 12th fret with that pinky on the same string and pick it down, another eighth note. On the end beat after three, we're going to go back to the middle finger on the 10th fret and pick it up, another eighth note. On four, we're going to shift down to the 5th fret on that same string using the first finger. We're going to pick that note down and let it ring out as an 8th note. And to complete that 3rd measure, we're going to go with the 3rd finger onto the same string at the 7th fret. We're going to pick that up, another 8th note. Okay, This last 8th note is actually tied to a dotted half note to start the next measure, which is worth 3 beats. And that's also tied to an eighth note. In short, this last eighth note is going to ring out as a whole note over two measures. With a four count lead in, here's what measures three and four combined are going to sound like. And what I'm going to do is add the last note of the second measure as part of the lead in. One, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Let's run through the first four measures in sequence just one time. I won't count this aloud as I play, I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And now we have reached the fifth measure. We're going to start out by placing the first finger on the G and B strings at the 12th fret. This first note is actually going to be the last eighth note of the fourth measure. We're going to pick it upwards and we're going to let it ring out into one of the fifth measure. Okay, those two notes are tied together. On the end beat right after one, we're going to play a couple ghost notes on them same strings picked upwards. And what a ghost note is, we're just going to release the pressure on the strings just so we're touching them to deaden them out. And it'll produce a clicking noise like this. Okay, on two, we're going to play those two notes again, pick downwards. This time they're going to ring out as eighth notes. And on the end beat after two, we're going to play another ghost note picked upwards on them same strings. On three, we're going to play two eighth notes picked down and up. We're going to let those ring out as we do it. On four, we're going to play another ghost note picked downwards. This one's going to be a sixteenth note. And to complete the fifth measure, we're going to quickly go to them same two strings with the third finger on the 14th fret. We'll pick this up on the E beat. What it is, is dotted eighth notes, which will ring out for the rest of the measure. With the four count lead in, here's what the fifth measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Now we've reached the sixth measure. This double stop that we just played to end the last measure is going to ring out into the first eighth note of this measure. Okay, the two notes are tied together. On the end beat after one, we're going to go back to the twelfth fret and bar them two strings again, play three eighth notes, pick up, down, and up. So with the four count lead in, here's what we have so far. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and. Now to complete the 6th measure, we're going to encounter some 16th note triplets and I'm not sure how to count these out. So what I'm going to do is just show you quickly how to do the last half of the measure. We're going to place the first finger on the high E string at the 14th fret and we're going to do a couple quick hammer-ons and pull-offs just like this. Just like that. And then we're going to place the pinky on the same string at the 17th fret. We'll pick this up and we're going to go back to the middle finger on the 14th fret or 15th fret I'm sorry 
and pick it down. Okay, with the four count lead in, here's what the fifth and sixth measures are going to sound like. Now I'm not going to count these as I play them. I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And now we have reached the seventh measure. This is the point at which it becomes difficult to count time and try to talk you through it. To start out the measure, we've encountered another series of 16th note triplets. There'll be six of these for each quarter of a measure. So I'm going to try to talk you through this the best I can. We'll start out by placing the third finger on the 12th fret of the high E string and the first finger on the 10th fret at that same string. We're going to pick down on one and we're going to pull off with that third finger to the first finger. We're going to hammer on and pull back off. This is four of the six notes, just like this. On the fifth note, we're going to place the third finger on the B string at the 12th fret and pick it down. And to finish up that first quarter, we're going to go back to the first finger on high E string at the 10th fret and pick it upwards. Here's what the first quarter is going to sound like. Now we've reached two. We're going to place the third finger on the B string at the 12th fret. Pick this down. It's going to ring out as a 16th note. And we're going to pull off to the first finger on the 10th fret of that same string. That's the E beat. Another 16th note. On the and beat, we're going to go to the G string at the 12th fret with that third finger. We're going to pick this up and bend it a step and pitch. We're going to let that ring out for 3 sixteenths of the measure. And on the end beat after 3, we're going to pick that same note again upwards and we're going to bend it up a step and pitch again. And it's going to ring out for the rest of the measure and it's also going to be tied to a whole note on the 8th measure and it'll ring out through all that. So I'm just going to give you a 4 count lead in and play this and try to get you through it. Okay, I'm not going to count it. One, two, three, four. Let's run through measures five through eight in sequence just one time. I won't count this aloud as I play. I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Let's run through the entire solo just one time. I won't count aloud as I play, I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. The uh, yellow highlights are the ghost notes. Other than that, there's really nothing else to note in this transcript. Just to save a little time and cut down the length of this video, let's take a minute to look at the tablature for guitar three. Notice that the first measure is your four count lead in. You're going to see a half note rest on one, followed by a quarter note rest on three, and an eighth note rest on four. We begin on the final and beat of the measure by picking upwards on the open E string. The blue highlights are what you call repeat signs. Think of them like bookends. Notice there's one at the beginning of the second measure and one at the end of the fifth measure. Each time we reach the repeat sign at the end of the fifth measure, it sends us back to the beginning of the second measure. We're going to repeat that three times as indicated by the green one through three above the fourth measure and you'll notice the green bar above that which is also above the fifth measure. That's the first through third endings and it's two measures long. On the fourth pass through we'll ignore that altogether and go directly to the fourth ending which is on the sixth measure and finish up the solo. Also notice that the last eighth note of every measure is tied to the first eighth note of every measure 
This creates a quarter note over two measures. We're using eighth note timing and steady alternate picking, and what this does is creates two upstrokes in a row, is indicated by the red arrows underneath. And now that you've seen the tab sheet, I'm going to walk you through the first five measures slowly. Remember, measure one is just the four count lead in. One, two, three, four, and, and two, and three, and 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 four, and. At this point, we've reached the end of the fifth measure, and we've encountered a repeat sign. Let's run through that entire rhythm part just one time. I won't count loud as I play, I'll just give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> The bass guitar is going to double the guitar 3 rhythm note for note. If you're using a pick, you're going to want to use the same picking technique and count. Let's run through the bass part just one time. One, two, three, four, and, and two, and three, and 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 A challenge for a typical cover band is to make this song work out live at a gig with only one or two guitar players in the band. There are a few possible ways to pull this off. As a big fan of teamwork, having two guitar players in the band and sharing the spotlight, I'd lobby for this approach. Since the bass and rhythm guitar are already doubling each other note for note on the studio recording, this can free up the guitars out live to trade off and play their respective lead parts where they would normally be and switch to rhythm during the measures where they aren't soloing. Here's what this arrangement will sound like. <laughs> 